16 through 20, and I'll be reading from New, Amer New International Version, sorry. And that's going to be page 688 in your Bibles and your pews. And it says, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Thank you, Chris. It's great to see everybody today and be able to worship God. Singing sounds great today, Justin. Singing sounds great for all the rest of you, too. <laughs> so that's always a good thing. Uh, we are going to be uh, having a fall festival coming up uh, end of the month. And so there are some sign-up sheets at the Welcome Center. Uh, if you can uh, help us out with that, we would really appreciate it. There's a whole bunch of things to sign up for, like uh, bringing candy as well as helping set up and clean up. This is one of our major things that we do as a community outreach to the neighborhood, and especially the neighborhood that is right around us here, because we want to invite them in and invite them to come and just play and have fun and get to know us a little bit so that we can talk to them so that perhaps then they would be comfortable enough to come in on a Sunday morning. And so we need your help in doing that. First of all, for supplies, for things that we do. But second of all, just to come and be friendly. I mean, that's part of it, is just having nice people around. And you guys are the nice people. So if you'll come and just kind of talk to them, get to know them a little bit, and just let them know that we're not so scary here. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, I think would help a lot in our outreach. This is kind of the bottom line of evangelism of what we're trying to do. Also, pictures are taken today, so if you want a directory with the pictures in it, you have to have a picture taken. You look as good as you're ever going to look, just admit it. I mean, this is it. You might as well just go have it taken. So that's, you know, go out and have that done. So I want to talk a little bit about wild today. Some of you know that uh, Nancy and I took a trip to Alaska and were able to be gone up there for a while and uh, it sparked some things with the trip, with growing up there, with a lot of different things. And so a lot of this is about that. Now we do have two different families, Joneses and Jean and Mary Ellen and uh, just because they're from Alaska doesn't mean that their contradiction of what I'm going to say is valid, okay? <laughs> of course, they've known me since I was really little, and uh, yeah, you might have to believe them, I guess. But I don't think there'll be any differences. So when you're talking about wild and you talk about what's dangerous, the first thing that comes back is what happened last week with the shooting at Burnett Chapel. In a church of Christ, we think that, well, that doesn't happen here. We have nicer people. And I wouldn't expect it to happen here. But you know what? It does happen. And there are times when we live in a place that is very dangerous. It shouldn't have happened. Is it dangerous to go to church? It's not. It shouldn't be. It's not any more dangerous than anything else. Well, where would you expect to get shot? Don't go to places like that. Would you expect it in a bar? Would you expect it in a grocery store? Would you, a parking lot? So don't ever park your car, right? Because I think a lot of times it's going to happen either on a street or in a parking lot. So certainly don't go there. And it really comes down to the fact that we just can't get away from those things. Anytime your surroundings are dangerous, dangerous enough to kill you, that's what I'm going to call wild. And so maybe that's not a real clear definition, but I think it, it will help for today. When Jesus talks about this, he has decided he's going to send out the 12. 
He has just called them. He has told them what he wants them to do. He has given them a message. He has given them authority. He has sent them out, or he's about to send them out. And so as he's giving them instructions, he is giving them instructions about going to people who are lost, people who are uh, distressed, people who have disease, people who are demon-possessed, people who have all kinds of things that Wilde has done to them. All of the terrible, awful things that can happen in this world, he says, I want you to go to them and heal them. And Jesus gives them authority and power to be able to do that. And so as they go out, he's saying, here's what I want you to do, is I want you to go with this message about the kingdom of God. It's at hand. I want you to let them know that it's going to happen. And I want you to bring peace to those people. And if they won't accept you, just shake the dust off your feet. And then we come to this passage that was read earlier by Christopher, that, behold, I'm sending you out a sheep in the midst of wolves. Really? Does that make you want to go? Sheep in the midst of wolves? It seems like uh, maybe there ought to be some more protection around here. He says, no, this is the plan. This is what I want you to realize. This is what I want you to do. I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Well, doesn't that sound dangerous? Well, it does sound a little bit dangerous. Are the wolves, you know, do they have sharp teeth? Yeah. And you know that they could eat sheep, right? Yeah. And I'm sending you there. I don't know how that makes you feel. I don't know if that makes you want to say, well, I don't trust God, because many times we want to think that God is there to protect us from everything. God is there so that we can be safe, so that everything will go our way. Nothing will ever be risky. Nothing will ever be dangerous. We will never have something that happens that's bad to us, or else God failed. And that is simply not true. Because that's what he says. I'm sending you out into the middle of wild wolves. And they will deliver you to courts, and they will flog you in synagogues, and you'll drag before governors and kings. Well, somehow that's just not looking like a real good thing to happen here. But he says, that's really what I want you to realize. Here's the wolf that we saw. Makes it a little bit un more unnerving since he's licking his lips and looking straight at me. sheep in the midst of wolves. And he says, I want you to be wise and innocent. Be smart about all of this. Realize that things are going to happen that are going to be bad because there's going to be some danger that happens. And so I want you to just bear witness to the Father. And he sends us right into the middle of the fight because that's what he wants to have happen. He wants people to know about this kingdom, but he wants that to happen from people of peace, from people who are not going to be afraid. He sends us into the wild to correct the damage that has been done, to heal people, to let them know God can help them through this. And so with all of the things that we are afraid of, he sent them to heal that. He sent them to heal leprosy. It's uncurable. How can I heal something that's uncurable? And whatever tragedy or disaster that has struck, he says, I want you to heal that kingdom of God is coming soon. And so on this Alaska trip that we were able to take, best thing ever, by the way, if you ever get a chance to go, and, and I'm just prejudiced, I guess, uh, we ran across one thing that, that you'd never see down here, at least I've never seen this. It's a trash can. Okay, why a trash can? Well, it says, keep Alaska bears wild, handle your garbage responsibly, if you can't read that. Why would you need a trash can that has a steel, reinforced, metal, hard to open? Well, because there's a problem with bears. These trash cans are everywhere. You don't see a normal trash can anywhere. All the trash cans look like this. Why? Because there are bears. In case you didn't know that the trash can is there because the bears are there. And the bears are going to, well, wait a minute, bears live way off in the wild. The wild is in your backyard a lot of times. And if you ever find yourself in a position like this, 
and realize it's feeding time, and he's looking right at you, you hope the tree holds. No, actually, I was on a big walkway, but yeah, this is part of their wildlife preserve that they have there. But this is a grizzly bear. You don't want to be around when they're hungry. Uh, yes, they have lots of things that they can do. And yes, the bears are around where the people are. So wild is not that very far in Alaska. It's gotten much tamer now. Uh, it's not like what it was. But at the same time, it can still happen. And I think maybe even the bears are a little bit more of a problem. We saw this girl standing by the side of the road. I mean, just driving along. Here she is, just standing there. So we stopped to watch for a little while. You don't realize how big they are until they get up on the road next to you. And then you go, wait a minute, that's, that's a pretty good size animal. We had one of these that was in our front yard a lot uh, back when I lived there. But they're just kind of out everywhere. And the wild and the people just kind of mix in together and everything works out fine. This was a seal that uh, we were able to see swimming along. He was doing just fine, no problem. But uh, don't let him get around these guys. These are the orcas, also known as killer whales. Great. It's dangerous. Well, you don't want to swim right there next to them. I mean, that's just one of those things that you have to be careful of. Don't swim right there next to them when they're going by looking for food or anything. These are caribou. They're probably okay. They don't eat you. But they do have scary-looking horns. Uh, you can see one especially that's just lost the velvet on his. And so this is part of the wild. I mean, we're just driving. And this was up at Denali. This is the other wildlife that we saw there. <laughs> They're standing in front of the boat called Miss Behaven. <laughs> so one of those rare sightings when you can see people who are actually there like this. So what's the point of all of this? It's not just to show you vacation pictures, OK? The point is, I grew up where wild was just a part of life. I mean, it was not that far away. It wasn't a risk. I mean, there might be a moose in the yard. There was no bears in our yard, but a moose is going to be there. There's a lot of things around. And I think Jesus talked about being near that kind of danger. Of course it's there. Did we ever feel unsafe? No. I mean, could you get killed if you walk too far in a certain direction and a bear meets you? Right, but I haven't seen a bear there. So we didn't worry about it. We didn't have any problem with any of this. And anytime you're surrounded by things dangerous enough to kill you, that's wild. All right? And the point is, you have to learn to live with it. It was not unusual. It was not different. It was just a part of normal life. It wasn't something that was anything that we would want to, you know, be afraid of. Our job is not to stay safe. Our job is to live with the evil in the world. Our job is not to avoid all evil. Jesus sent us into the middle of it. And sometimes I think that's what we don't realize. We proclaim the message of God and his kingdom. He sent us here to heal. He sent us here to do many things. And being a Christian is not about safety. And if we think it's about safety, then we've got the wrong concept of what Jesus was wanting us to do. He wanted us to go and to embrace some of the things that were wild and to realize that there are places like that. It's knowing where the danger is and, and it isn't going away. But being able to go into the middle of it, there's a lot of things that involve risk. And I don't know that things were any more dangerous when, we li when I lived in Alaska than they were when we lived in Miami. I think probably the danger was worse in Miami. A lot worse traffic, a lot more shootings. They knew how to shoot in Alaska. Would you send your kids to camp if uh, they had just shot a bear there? Well, they shoot a bear at camp every year. Not every year, maybe every other year, but some of the time a bear wanders in and yes, we've got kids there. It's just part of the fun of the week, you know. 
he finds the trash can or the garbage pit and he comes in and all right I'm sorry we're never gonna get rid of this bear we can't capture it and so yeah would you send your kids to camp there of course it makes it for an exciting week the thing you have to realize is there are no snakes in Alaska would you send your kids out where there are snakes Certainly you would never let them out of the house, would you? Would you ever let them outside into a park or into anywhere where there are snakes around? I mean, we've got to keep them safe, right? The point is there's danger everywhere. Our job is not to be safe. Being a Christian is not about safety. It's about embracing the wild and realizing where we have this wild and knowing what's dangerous. The passage in Mark chapter 5 is one of the passages I think about when I think of where Jesus encountered wild things. It says, And he came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes, and when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. And he lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain. For he had been often bound in shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and he broke the shackles in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. And night and day among the tombs and under the mountains and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him and crying out with a loud voice, he says, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. I've seen some people who were maybe a little unstable, but I've never seen a guy who is absolutely possessed by the devil himself or by one of his workers, by a demon. I don't really believe that's still around in our day and time. It could come back. That's a lesson for another time. But that's got to be one of the scariest things is when you encounter a person who really is all about evil. And that's really what they're doing the most is their whole focus is on evil. And Jesus steps onto the shore. And sure enough, here's a guy here who has a legion of demons in him and living in him so that he can't even be a part of the town he lives in the cemetery he cuts himself he runs naked through there everybody knows he's there and they're not afraid anymore huh why not that sounds like the scariest guy ever but they're not afraid anymore yeah he's been out there forever we know about him he's part of the landscape he's what we get used to and I think that's what happens to us all the time is it's what we get used to we're used to snakes they're around yeah they don't bother you if you hear something rattle be careful where you step uh, there are dangers out there but we get used to all the dangers we get used to the evil ones too don't we? It doesn't mean that they're not dangerous. It doesn't mean that they're not there. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't be concerned about it, but we don't need to be afraid of it. We just need to realize where it is and say, God, you can be there to protect me. Just be aware of what it's like that we do live in a place that has evil in it. And as Jesus looks at this guy, he casts him out, out all of the demons into the pigs that are surrounding. They run down the hillside, they're drowned, and then the people come out and they've lost their whole income for the whole area. I mean, there's a whole lot of pigs there. And now they're floating in the water. And they come out and they look at Jesus and he's healed the man. He has no demons in him anymore and he's clothed, he's in his right mind and he's sitting there like a normal person. He's not the scary guy in the tombs who's screaming and shouting and cutting himself that no one can capture because he can break any chain you want to bring. You know who they're scared of? 
Jesus. They said, we need you to go away now. You see, we're not afraid of the evil that lives right on our doorstep because we've made a place for it. We're pretty comfortable with it. We know it's there. We know it's bad. We know it's wrong. And it's been right there all the time. I think we need to realize where Satan is. I think we need to realize what he does. And there's many times where I think people are more afraid of Jesus and they won't come to him, but they'll be comfortable with the evil and the demons and the things around them. Jesus is in the wild because there's a lot of evil in this world. I think the world sees it and they would rather have it that way. They would rather have Satan than have Jesus because his righteousness seems too much for them. But we're used to that kind of evil, right? Peter, when he writes about this later in 1 Peter chapter 5, He has humbled yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that, that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. That's a little bit of a scary passage. He says, the devil is around like a roaring lion. Okay, we didn't take this picture. I took all the others and I didn't take this picture. There are no roaring lions that I know of up in Alaska. But we know about those dangers. And he says, he is seeking someone to devour. That doesn't mean just play with. That means he is wanting to absolutely destroy and come in and possess. But you notice the way that he puts this passage. It isn't like, oh, no, be careful, run away, this is awful. He says, no, your adversary is like this roaring lion. Resist him, firm in your faith. The same kind of suffering is being experienced by everybody else. There are lions out there. Be careful of them. Be safe. But we live in the wild. We live in a world, no matter where you live in this whole planet, that has evil all around it. I mean, you don't have earthquakes here. You don't have hurricanes here. And so maybe that's why we want to stay here. The worst you get is a little bit of dust or snake bit. But it isn't that there isn't evil here. And I want you to realize that that's where we live, is sometimes that's the wildest place. He gives you the solution in the passage. He says, humble yourself under God, cast all your anxiety on him, be serious and watchful about what's evil, and I want you to resist the devil, and God will protect you. He doesn't take you out of the situation, but God will protect you in the middle of the situation. Yeah, there seems to be a story, something about Daniel and lions, right? He didn't take him out of it. He says, you'll be okay. You can be right next to the lions and you'll be okay. So let me ask you, what's your best time of spirituality? What's the time when you feel the very closest to God, when you feel like this is part of God and this is who I want to be? You see, we live with danger and wild all the time and Sometimes even the friends we choose would kill us, at least kill us spiritually. And we make wrong choices there. We fight against the evil that's in the world. And that's much more dangerous than anything else. The Bible's full of those kind of stories. There was a Samaritan going from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers. It's a chance to tell about a good Samaritan, a man going to Jerusalem. He fell among robbers. The Samaritan's the good one who rescues him. The prodigal son, he found wild in a big city, right? 
We all know one, we've been one, or we're waiting for one to come home. How did they find that? How did we find the evil? Because it's all around us. And just because we're not in a place that has that much wild, have you seen the stats on Phoenix? And what kind of crimes are committed here? I looked up for where are you most likely to be, I think it was shot. You are 25 times more likely to be shot in the United States than anywhere else in the world. Do you realize that? That's where we live. Now, if you're murdered, that's a whole different thing, but that's one of the things that it talked about. Jesus found wild in a wilderness. Encountered Satan there, right? So God lets us be there, wants us there, sheep in the middle of wolves, so that we can do what he wants us to do. The parable of the sower, we sow the seed, and the seed on the road, the devil snatches away. Really? I would just talk to that person, and the devil is right there with us. I wouldn't want you to think that he's very far away. Jesus also calls Judas the devil. I chose 12 of you, and one of you is a devil. Certainly the influence of the 12. So why are we surprised that evil would happen at church? Why are we surprised that people might be not what they seem. Why would we be surprised or think that there's anywhere where we can be safe? We can be safe in God because he's the one that protects us. He has the armor of God. He's the one that shows us how to do that. So let me just ask, where do you meet evil in your life? You do. Where do you meet it? You know you do. And maybe evil's already caught you. Maybe you need a way out. I think the passage we've just looked at, Humble Yourself Under the Mighty Hand of God, really talks about our repentance and it talks about casting our anxiety on Him so that He is able to lift up, so that He is able to protect. We are able to make a covenant with Him as we repent and are baptized into Christ and He can set you free. And sometimes it, it's like, well, I don't know that that's going to make it because I've done so many things and it's already too late and I'm already dead. I am one of the evil ones that you're supposed to be watching out for. You do realize Jesus raises the dead, don't you? There isn't a time in this wild world where we live that God cannot reach you. We all are prodigal, we've been prodigal, we're waiting for others to come home. Maybe that's you today. Would you come while we stand and sing? Salvation to God, who sits upon the throne, and unto